in the beginning. This will probably be the most important thing that the conservative community does in the South for the next hundred years. Happy, uh, happy Hanukkah. Hey, everybody. Hi. The bar Torah time. Lauren's on the call. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Doing well. Good. Great. Hope you are, too. First of all, Ramah had been so meaningful to me. I lived for the summers. You know, our motto was Ramah de Rome soon to be meant to be. And that rang very personally with me because I felt everything that I had learned and done sort of led to this point. It's a tremendous opportunity to make a dream come true. This idea of building something from scratch. I think we would all just gone back to our normal lives, but we were naive enough to have that dream and move it forward. I'm Jake Heyman from Pensacola, Florida. We needed to connect the dots between all the communities in the South. The South is one of the fastest growing Jewish populations. We need to produce future leaders and we need to breed them right here in the South. Hey guys, want to know how to have a great summer? One that's action packed and loads of fun? It's Camp Ramah and all that fun's just about to begin. The key was people connecting in other communities because it wasn't big Jewish communities. Having a camp in the South would make a big difference in terms of Jewish identity. A friend of mine said that Shelley Dorff was starting to stir things up. In 1993, Shelley said, we need to bring the region together. Well, how about a Camp Ramah in the South? Until 1996, there were six Camp Ramahs in the United States, one in Canada and one in Israel. Now, there's a brand new Camp Ramah here in the South. And that was just a, an epiphany. Several months later, we had that first meeting in Charlotte. That was the springboard. That meeting was the birth of, of Ramah Durant. Well, I got involved. I was inspired by building something that would have a generational effect for the Jewish communities. It was a new idea, a new thing. It was a camp with a philosophy, and people were very excited about it. The model was different in structure and finance and ownership, uh, and that's good but it didn't happen easily. Murray stood up and said, you know, we need to create a year-round retreat program. Zarek, I think, discovered the property in some biblical way. It was like Hashem talked to them and said, this is the property. Linda Walker, she really saw this as a people connecting mission and built the community. And I said, Linda, whatever it is, sign me up. I'm all in the opening ceremony for people to come up and look at. Everybody is here to take a look for the first time of the beautiful facility people are very excited about. The shopping center north of Atlanta getting on a bus and riding up to camp. And we got off the bus and it was meadow grass up to about here. I mean, it was a field. Frankly, it didn't matter what it looked like. It was that Ramah connection everybody seeing it and saying this is god's country there were so many hills i was so out of breath but i realized that eric's ultimate plan was to make the healthiest jewish kids in the in the southeast <laughs> and uh, it was beautiful i mean i remember it was like in the old days when people were having fundraisers everyone would raise their hand i'll give this i'll give that i am prepared to make a personal commitment of twenty-five thousand dollars thank you Bubba signed up. Nobody could compare to Bubba in terms of raising funds. And we were committing to opening the camp the following summer. Leonard spoke and said, no child will ever be denied entrance to camp because of money. So Leonard gave us $100,000. Baba increased fivefold. Chico was a very savvy businessman. And he said, look, having been on this site, heard your vision, and I'm giving more than Mr. Kaplan and Mr. Mitchell. So I'd like to solicit for another 750. We can do that. That's $3 million. He says there's an urgent call for Eric Singer. So of course, my heart dropped that he says, you got your camp, we just raised the $3 million. It was really a dramatic moment, emotional moment. Eric, what uh, kind of challenges do you face to make this Camp Ramon? Well, there are several. Raising the money was a miracle, but building that facility, getting it done in the amount of time we got it done in, 
I, I still, to this day, I'm not sure how the hell it happened. Regrading the roads, retrofitting all the cabins, the kosher dining hall, swimming pool, a new water system. To quote Eric Singer, I was hired because I was young and stupid and didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> <laughs> In basically eight months, we designed, built, raised money for, found kids, found staff, and sort of designed a program. It's our job to make sure we stay on track. This camp is for you, Machane Ramad Darom. I got a call saying, Lauren, you have to come up here. You can't have staff with you. A week before camp was pouring rain and nothing was happening. There were no roads. There was no way it was going to be ready. And then miraculously, we walked out of the trailer and the skies became blue. Suddenly there was a rainbow. The construction trucks start coming in and we worked around the clock. The night before camp open. Effie, Eric, and I were in the deep end of the pool. All kinds of garbage and junk were in the pool. We needed to clean it out. But the thing that I will never forget was the following morning, the first busload of kids came up. And Eric and I looked for a tree to hide behind. We were so emotionally on a high. And the miracle is that 300 kids came to camp that summer and all 300 went home emotionally better for the experience. I, I always talk about Ramat Rome as a family. Sitting here, it's really like being back with family. And I think that as I see the pictures of our first campers getting married, having kids, now our early staff members coming back and taking leadership. What I saw that day is an institution and a, a family that has deeply touched the lives of so many Jews in the, in the South and has produced professional Jewish leaders, lay Jewish leaders, uh, and future generations of campers. A really amazing journey, a passion that's turned on now um, for well over 25 years. A Jewish community of our own making, Ramah and its ability to bring people together in a global village was so important. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank all of you because you've changed a lot of lives. You've created an incredibly strong community throughout the Southeast and beyond. Lila Tov. Thank you. Lila uh, Tov, Lauren. Take care, everybody. Eli Havivi, Havivi, Eli. I remember the day that they paved the roads and one of the kids was weeping the entire day because they ruined her camp by paving over the roads. Who would be nostalgic about the mud? <laughs> I, I mean, it was horrible that first I loved it. Sliding down the, where the amphitheater is now to get actually down <laughs> to the, to the Beidon. It just filled me up with such such pride. It's been really wonderful watching Rama grow. You know, we evolve as we need to, and paving of the roads is one piece of that, but there's a lot to it. Welcome to Rama the Welcome to the first day again. We talk about the very first summer as a miracle of God, that people had a place to sleep, which was in question, a place to eat, which we didn't for the first few days. It was a total balagan and, you know, it's really a miracle. Those first few summers, I think one of the life skills that I learned the most was crisis management. Absolutely. Okay. It rained a lot and we learned that the key car is going to flood when it rains. Okay, that's very interesting. What are we going to do now? One thing after another was like, okay, how are we going to manage? I tell stories in my Hebrew school that I run now, stories that I developed over years of doing Harka Oat. Those are invaluable. You want to talk about an internship for life, deep impact for the sake of our students who are working for us. We equip them with the skills to ask questions and to listen and to observe. Learning to deal with kids and how to manage problems. You have people looking out for each other get outside themselves and really open up their hearts. Those skills that I learned at camp, I still use today. There's nothing better than the, the camp experience. One of the neatest things about Ramah Durum is that every year new, cool, exciting stuff will be added to make it fun for everyone. We continue to grow. We grew uh, in numbers, but also really grew in the depth of the experience. And it really took our music program to the next level. 
there was a lot of responsibility on our shoulders when we made choices to do things a certain way. And we used to have the saying, you know, you do it once at school and twice it's a tradition. So everything from the camp song, which was the standard Rama song until Joanna Dulkin um, changed it. Joanna was singing the Pete's Cooler on a New song and we had no idea what to do with it. And we all said, we should make up a dance to this. And we just started sort of lassoing around. And uh, I came back 15 years later to a camp of 800 kids lassoing around doing the same exact thing. And so you don't even realize how ingrained they become. Now you look at Habdallah, which was nothing like uh, it is now. Nothing's better than Habdallah. Totally. What does Ramad Jerome do right with Habdallah? The whole camp comes together. It is that shift from Shabbat into the rest of the week. There is this moment of community release where they can just be themselves. You felt part of something that was so much larger than yourself. I could just like go crazy at Habdallah and dance with my friends and like not really care about literally anything else. It cannot be replicated anywhere else. It's just a stamp of the, the strength of the entire community. It's honestly beautiful because we all start with that one thing in common, that we're all Jewish. But every summer I feel more connected. I love being able to bring home new traditions. Rama has been the basis for their Jewish identity. If I didn't go to camp, I wouldn't have met so many important people in my life. Hanging out with your friends, like playing cards, or literally anything. It makes the place feel like nothing else just because you're with those people. It is all coming back to relationships. You are in the bubble. You never want it to disappear or pop. Our friends would say, don't your kids get homesick? And I would say, no, they come home and they're camp sick. I remember vividly sitting down in my parents' kitchen and saying to them that I want to pursue a career doing this. From that moment on, it was all about how am I going to keep that camp spirit in my life? That utter joy that you feel when you are jumping out of your car or running off the bus and into the arms of people that feel like your brothers and sisters, and also the agony you feel when you say your goodbyes. It's not Jewish summer camp, it's Ramadaro. friends. Hi, everybody. My favorite week of the year is Yofi. The summer of 2007, our first introduction to Ramad Rome was Camp Yofi. Our experience can be hard as parents of disabled kids. Yeah, we couldn't be with other families in the neighborhood. We had, we had nowhere to turn to. We were excluded other than Sue and Susan. I don't think anyone in the Southeast knew what autism was. The idea was sparked. What is the Jewish community doing for these families? And so that is how Yofi began. We get to this campus in some town called Clayton, Georgia. I remember the first year, I was actually a little overwhelmed. Like I just couldn't believe there was this Yofi family camp that we could go to. And I looked around and of course, all I saw was forest and mountains and water. And my first thought was to provide an environment of safety. The most vivid memory I have is when we were all along the lake. And all of a sudden, you see this wall of counselors. And you have this wall of humans just standing there. So we could relax for, for a few minutes. Everyone just like breathed. And I just kept thinking like, wow, they get it. These people get us and we get them. It was so cathartic. My whole life was turned around in, in five days. There were so many moments where we were just thankful. And genuine people, there was no agenda. And Yofi absolutely um, changed our lives. To say that Yofi changed my life and my path would, it would be an understatement. My journey would be to help individuals with autism and individuals with special needs. After seeing so many children age out of Yofi, we saw the impact that it had on our campers. We knew that we had to find a way to create that within the whole Ramad Zaram community. Maya was, was finishing with, with Yopi. She'd been there since she was five. We started tossing around the idea to enable Yofi graduates to attend camp. 
I remember very well fighting for that. <laughs> At Ramada Realm, that was always a goal for us to have Tikva. I just think it merged two communities that should have and always should be one community. We fully immerse our Tikva program kids within our camp. Campers see the value in each individual. Inclusion starts when the campers going into third grade and continues throughout all of the age out. Our vocational program that we just started last year. What are you gonna work on? Cafe, Ramada Rome. Sarah could experience Gesher. She could be a young sport captain. She could be on staff. They not only serve coffee to counselors, they also serve to all the ADAs. Sarah's a great example of someone that does an awesome job. Sarah, I have my order ready. Oh, okay, wait a minute. The self-esteem she's gained from this important job that she loves, she talks about it 11 months in advance. It's like, <laughs> I can't stop talking about it. The counselors and the friends, it's always to believe in yourself and you can do new things. The whole Camp Vermont community came together to allow someone like Maya to continue. 2021. 2021. When we look at the 25 years of Ramada Rome, Yofi, and Tikva, it's just a part of who we are. We just sing together for half an hour, and then it carries me through the year. Where the mountains touch the sky, Am Yisrael Chai, Yofi is the place for you and me. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Hello, friends. Hello. Hi. Hey. It is so good to see you. It was really the vision of the founders that Ramah would be much more than a camp, expanding the concept of Ramah to reach a, a much broader audience. I mean, we knew people wanted to come to Ramah to Rome and wanted an experience for Passover that wasn't formal. I, I don't want it to be an oppressive atmosphere, she says. The Rome is whatever you make it. Be. They wanted it to be a fun place they could bring their children or their parents, their extended families. So no matter who came to our door and came into our community, we always prided ourselves on having Southern hospitality. I agree with Fred. I think we might have a big family, but we have an even bigger Pesach family. When first open, we went to the Avery retreat that we had. We've been to a synagogue retreat. We've been to farm to table. PJ Library's going on. We've been there for the mood. It just keeps on expanding. Whichever one we go to, that feeling is there. It is a family. I met so many lifelong friends, wonderful people there. Some of them are right here on the Zoom right now. Then I learned about the Jewish Women's Getaway, and we've always just had a blast. It's always been a great way to connect with women from all sorts of communities. It's a space that I can just let go of everyday life, be able to learn in a different way. One of the, the best things that Winter Break Family Camp did was gave us a taste of what it meant to be a camper. As much as we go for our kids, we also go for ourselves. First of all, after being on staff, you can drink at the retreats. We got to experience Camp Ramah and the community that it provides. One Lee Mood, I was sitting in a session and was like, you know, there was this guy that I saw that was like really cute. Like, I kind of want to know more about him. We started dating shortly after and two years later to the day, we got engaged at um, at Camp Ramah. My, I met my wife there and, and we built a family and it's a very special place for both of us. Part of my community, they set themselves in the Beit Midrash and sat there for hours upon hours and finding a renewed sense of self there, a Jewish self. We engage people Jewishly in a way that feels authentic, but actually leaves them understanding and learning more about the religion and about each other. We only spoke for maybe 20 minutes, and by the time we had finished our conversation, um, for the first time in my life, I knew that I had come home that I was Jewish enough to be Jewish, that my Judaism doesn't look like anybody else's, nor should it. Kola Kavo to Shannon for going through the journey that she has gone through. I would not have picked a better place to find Judaism than Ramada Rome, honestly. Ramada Rome um, is your home, and it's true because it rhymes, um, but it's, it's also true in general. They say that 
camp is the people, and that's very true. But at Ramada Rum, there is something very special about the place. I agree with Eliana, the most spiritual place I've ever davened. You know, you feel God is the, God is over the water and, 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 you know, on the tree. And as I look behind Nor, the way that the mountains just form with the lake being there in the middle, I could see the parting of the Red Sea there. And it's a place where you can put your foot in the water and put your foot into a beautiful community. And all the wisdom of Judaism gets revealed by being in that space. And the more you become part of it, the more you come to love being Jewish. Something about the place that is just magical. It's the friends you make, truly. I have a whole new Ramah family that I never had before. And there's really nowhere else in the country you can see that come to life, that everybody feels so incredibly lucky to be surrounded by Jewish people. And that camp fills that identity, you know? They find comfort in that. They find the Jewish neshama. neshama. Yeah. Like, and once you get it at camp, you can take it anywhere you go. We have so much to be part of. We are leading the way. The other Jewish camps are looking to us. All roads lead to Jerome. And I think we realize that when you're a camper, you realize it when you're on staff, you realize it as a parent, you realize it at family camp. And generationally, you realize that all roads lead to Jerome and they never stop leading there. Individuals who have influenced their families, who have influenced their community, step back and marvel at the transformative impact of Ramadaron. It's a miracle.